Hi, I'm Don Whitaker. I'm here to um, today to discuss um, the goalscoring of Clark Dennis and uh, a little bit of work I've done with him. Um, Clark uh, finished one shot off um, getting in the playoff for the US Open in 1994 at Oakmont. Um, he's a uh, very good player, had a PJ store taste for many years, and um, he's currently starting to work very hard on his game again. Now, what you may notice is this is um, like a curved spine I've drawn in here and um, how his hips are a little level, the right hip may be a little high. Now Clark was actually trying to incorporate a few ideas of um, some stack and tilt principles with other things and he was getting himself a little bit muddled up. Um, not surprisingly there with his setup. So one of the first things we did was to alter his um, setup position and um, get himself lined up at a dress. So we can see how I've lowered that right hip down, okay, kick, which is kick the right knee in and putting some pressure on the instep of the right foot. It's also raised the left side a little bit and it's got the spine fully lined up. Now, the key to having the spine fully lined up is that when we walk around in everyday life, our spine is straight up and down. Now, when we take hold of a golf club, the, the right hand goes below the left, the right, sh right shoulder goes down. This then causes the uh, curvature in the spine. If we don't, then kick the right hip down. Well, if we kick the right hip down and the right knee in, this lines the spine up biomechanically. It also places the left hip socket over the left ankle. But with you being in a biomechanically sound setup position, you're willing to make a turn. Well, when your spine's out of line, it's going to do whatever it can to get back in line. So this becomes evidence when we look at Clark's golf swing, what we've already started, and we can see this right hip's gone up. He's now quite stacky over that left side, and as a reference his turning point is in between his shoulder blades that's actually going towards the target. And we can see on the right that this particular element of the movie is something that he's going to struggle with. We worked together for a couple of days. This was um, on the evening was um, on the Thursday which is on the left and this is some Friday work we did on the right which is really our first proper session together. So we've got himself lined up. We can still see He's really struggling to create the correct wind-up as that right hip's still wanting to work up high. He's trying to still sit a little bit on that left pivot point. What tends to happen for him there is he'll work underneath it a little bit and end up feeling a little bit stuck on the way down. Big time if we see it on the right-hand side. So what we tend to see is on the right-hand side, his body is angled more towards the target, gets forward and then backs out of it big time. What we see more on the left is how he's more over the front pivot point and there's less back out, the left shoulder's coming up less because he hasn't got as much of like a stack and tilty type look to it. We end up being able to come to a full finish, rotating, having a lot more speed, whereas holding it off a little bit more on the left and not really able to complete the golf swing as we would have really um, liked him to do. Now, when we have a look at the first move of his um, on the left against the one the, um, on day two. We see on day one when he takes it back how this right hip goes up, okay, and very little turn at the top of the arc. There's not, the, although it's quite a deep looking golf swing, his arm's a bit higher than his shoulder plane, the right hip's gone up, and he's not really created enough depth and room for his arms. Well, we see here is how the right hip turns back. Right shoulder turns back and the club ends up lagging away. See the butt of the club goes beautifully in towards the right thigh. So then as the right hip keeps turning back, we see it's a shallower golf swing. The right elbow is more in front of the body and he's created a lot more depth. Now, what this caused on the left is, as he came in, he would have felt stuck. So his head backs out of it now to work his arm more in front. Loses his touch line a little as he's going forwards. And then backs aren't only able to come through to a very small finish. <coughs> what we saw here was he didn't lose anywhere near as much touch line and he was able to lead with the left side so much more. So that left shoulder cleared away from the chin from there to there so much quicker than it did do. But it's still stuck, stuck, stuck. See the gap between the shoulder and the chin here? See the gap? here, it's a little bigger, okay, see it keeps moving, so the openness of the shoulders, how square the shoulders are, 
so they're more open on the left and square on the right. Okay, this is viewed from right in here. So right in here. So it's much more open, meaning that so he's been able to wind something up so and then be able to unwind it but with his arms in front of the body, he's got a lot of room. So we can know that he's harder into the left side as the right foot rolling over more. He's not got very active feet. You know, he uses ground pressure very well. But we see it's a very laboured drag up of the foot to only a short finish. But it's much more up onto the toe more explosively as he's dragged right round to a full finish via the rotation of the body, but via that left side pulling, which is obviously a huge key for him. And in my opinion, it's probably one of his biggest keys is to once he's got the depth of turn allow himself to be able to let our left shoulder work away so the arms can work on the very last day we worked together so it's like two in a little bit days we'll see how the butt of the club worked in it's a great turn the club had lagged away beautifully got a really deep back swing but we can see how quickly that left shoulder's moved away it's just moving away so quickly and very around to the finish i mean very very around to the finish in like a three quarter type shot here because we can see it in the finish it's not really got all the speed that's dragging him to this full finish now what we tended to find was when he wasn't turning the right side away not particularly the hip his hands got a little active in the first move well when we actually got the right hip turning back first of all we, we're going to allow him to make this first move that he'd always made we kind of drag the butt of the club away and the club head follows. So this is now a phenomenal one-piece move. So from here, the club's so in front of him, it's really hard work to stop it from being in front all the way to the top. Then he gets over the left side, and then he's able to completely unwind through it, and we can see the full finish he's making. We see it from here, how the right hip, right shoulder turns back, and the ball of the club moves away first. Then the handle moves first, and last thing's go the club head. So this is as outside the hands as you're ever going to get, and this is one piece as you're going to get because the club shaft is an extension hitting him straight in the belly button. From there, it's just left arm rotate, right arm fold, keeping the arms all the way in front, all the way to the top. So that's one of the things that we got. We got him more in, the arms more in front of the body by turning the right hip more. So it gets everything more in front, all the way to the top here. So then he can let go of that left shoulder away from the chin as quick as he possibly can which is pulling the arms in front of the body keeping them there so then he can begin to unwind around fully to this finish um, I believe that after this we'd look at trying to get Clark a little bit more aggressive in the um, lower side from um, in the transition getting him over the left side a little more this will drag the arms even more in front with him over the left side so you can compress it even better and have even more speed to go around to the finish and um, the backswing it was looked fantastic here. We can see how much more depth of turn he's got on this golf swing to the one from the first day when the right hit went very high. And we can see how yes he's got it looks like it's so one piece, but it can't be because nothing can work away together because the hip hasn't turned. So we can see it's more up and steep and in front and more backed out to the finish. Much more so than the um, swings later on and this one here from the, obviously from the last day where we see it's just really good move now I hope you've enjoyed um, me talking about the bit of work I did with Clark we did that over at Mira Vista Golf and Country Club um, if you'd like to contact me you can do um, at dan at danwhitakergolf.com or you can visit the website www.it danwhitakergolf.com Thanks a lot.